Hey there, you're watching the Data Dispatch. Thank you for tuning in. Today is the third and last video in a series covering everything you need to know to backpack the Lost Coast. And today we are covering tide planning. Tide planning? I don't understand. We're backpacking, not boating. What, what do we need to know about the tides? I don't understand. Yes, a unique feature of this particular backpacking trip is having to plan for the tides. Now before we get started, if you're unfamiliar with the Lost Coast, you're going to want to check out my first two videos to get you up to speed. I'll put links up here and in the description below. And in those videos we cover how to get to the trail, how to get around the trail transportation wise, and important trail specific rules and regulations. But on to today's topic, tides. The Lost Coast, or at least the northern half that I'm doing, has three distinct sections that are underwater, or at least bits of them are underwater, when the high tide comes in. So two times a day, the trail is gone and it is underwater. So first off, where are these sections? Well, as you're hiking north to south, in mileage terms, there's a little section at mile 2.5, and then there are two longer stretches, basically from mile 4 to mile 8.8, .8, and then from mile 18 to mile 22.7. Those are roughly. In landmark terms, as you're hiking north to south, there's a the small piece is right before Punta Gorda Lighthouse at mile 2.5. And then the two longer stretches, the first one is basically from Sea Lion Gulch to Randall Creek. And the last one is from Miller Flat to Gitchell Creek. Do not attempt these sections at high tide. Simply Google, unfortunately, Lost Coast deaths or Lost Coast drownings and you will see why. This is important stuff. So that's where not to go during high tide. But how do you know when that is? What is high tide and how do you know when it is? Well. High tide for this particular trail is you're not going to want to attempt any of those sections if the tide is over about three to three and a half feet. That's sort of the general rule of thumb. Now, obviously, that's going to, it's going to be somewhat like crossing a flowing creek or river. If you are particularly short or particularly out of shape, I would give yourself a little bit more leeway. Maybe set your ceiling at three feet or two and three quarter feet, something like that. But definitely the general rule of thumb is three to three and a half feet. Do not attempt these sections. So, okay, so that's great. You can't go when the tide's over three, three and a half feet, but how do you know when that is? Well, luckily there are some really good resources out there. First, NOAA has a website which tells you when the high tide and low tides are at Shelter Cove, California. But, you know, let's just, let's just check it out, actually. Okay, you can see here, let's say we're going to go backpacking next week, April 23rd through the 25th. You can see you put your dates down here. I've already just preloaded it. And let's say we're going to start hiking on Monday, April 23rd, 2018. You can see here there are two high tides here for the 23rd and two low tides. And the first one, the, the high high tide is at 5.28 a.m. Then there is a low low tide at 12.45 in the afternoon. And then a high tide at 7.49 p.m. These are great. This is a great setup. You can see here and here is your three feet line. This is the only thing I don't like about this website. Look, let's say, so I can't start hiking until here. But when I put my mouse here, I put my little cursor here, it doesn't tell me what time that is. I have to interpolate. So I can see that high tide's at 5.30 in the morning. There's a low tide at 12.45, so three feet, you know, I don't know, 8.30, 9 o'clock kind of by this. And then I know I have to be out of the high tide sections. I want to be out of those danger sections by, you know, I don't know, this is 12.45, this is 7.49. So I, I don't know. You can't really tell. 3 o'clock, 4 o'clock. So this site has great information, but it's just kind of hard to get specifically what we need. That's why I also recommend using the Wonderland Trail Guides Tide Planner. Okay, here we go. I've got in the same dates. This is the Wonderland Guides. I will put a link for this in the description below as well. And you can see, in some respects, this site has way less information, but it has exactly what we need. It's got the high tide at 528 in the morning, low tide at 1245 in the afternoon, and then the high tide at 750. But it does the interpolation for you. So the low tide hiking window begins after 8.40 a.m. So that's to say, if we're on this other website, this three o'clock, this is 8.40 in the morning. It's just writing it down in plain words. And then we know we have to be off the high tide section. See, I was way off. I thought it was three or four. This is by about five o'clock in the afternoon. That's so this here is about five o'clock in the afternoon. So they do recommend checking this site against the um, NOAA data. My guess is they built some sort of web scraper and they're just, you know, not 100% sure it's accurate. Now, for when I'm going, it was spot on. For this example, it was spot on. So I think it works and I recommend it, but definitely use both of these in conjunction with one another when you're planning your trip. 
So really, that's it. In summary, there are three sections of the northern section of the Lost Coast Trail that are covered by water during high tide. That is basically the three and a three and a half foot level. Go to the NOAA website, check it against the Wonderland Trail Guides Planner to get the exact time of when you cannot go. Only try these sections, I should have mentioned this earlier, only try these sections on an outgoing tide, like you're gonna start them as the water's starting to go out, not when the water is starting to come back in. Give yourself as much time as possible. And lastly, if there's a small craft advisory, lower the ceiling at which you're gonna try these. Don't try them at three and a half feet, try them at two feet or one and a half feet, something like that. Okay, well that's it. If you thought this video was informative, hit that like button. Hit subscribe if you don't wanna miss any more planning videos, gear talk, gear reviews, that sort of thing. We got a lot of stuff coming. Thank you so much for watching. Until next time, go have some fun outside. See you soon.